YouTube and welcome back to another NHL 24 video. Today I want to talk about the strategies we are using in the game. The game is out for a little bit more than two months. Also, we have multiple patches. I found that after the latest patch EA released, I really struggled to score goals and also win a single game. I just couldn't buy myself a win. With that being said, I actually had to go and change the way I play the game. Before we go into the more details, if you could smash that like button and subscribe, it really helps the algorithm more people see the video and also makes me smile. Without losing any time, let's jump into the video, talk about the strategies and things you need to pay attention now when you are changing them. So we have three strategies we can choose in the game. One is overload, another one is behind the net, and one is crush the net. And all three of them actually is based on what players are you using. If you're using the biggest and the slowest ones, or you're using the fastest, or you're using a mix of big, fast, and average. I will go through the details exactly what I mean with that and explain when you're building your team, which strats would suit your team the best? So one thing, if you watched my previous strats video, then I said that I like to mix the first two lines, one strategy, the third and fourth line, different strategy. This year, it actually doesn't work. You have to run all four lines with the same strategy because you pretty much play the same game. And unfortunately, game this year is designed after all these patches, then you just really cannot be very smart about it. So... I personally use overload and I will explain why, because I use the mixture of the players. I don't chase the meta, I have a lot of smaller players and I also have some big guys who barely can skate. So overload is the best way for the mixture of that. Let's say you will skate enough. Also, I am not really skating enough and creating and waiting when that player will be in front of the net. Overload really helps when your players are setting in the points. You use the icon passing and you pass the puck around until you basically find that free guy in front of the net, use the icon passing and score the goal. That's the best strategy to use if you play the same way. With the carry and dump, I have it on two. Cycle shoot, I have it on two as well because I like my players still to cycle and shoot a little but not a lot. Energy, I was running it on the max on the 10, but then I only realized then how the players are actually going for a change. It doesn't really work. So I have it on 7. And don't block and block. I have it on 10. And the reason why is because I use the tallest and the biggest goalkeepers. If you're using someone who is super small, let's say UC Saros, don't block and block should probably be on 0 because then it means your players will block a lot of shots in front of him and because he's small, he will actually not see the pack. And I know it sounds insane, but EA is actually taking these things into consideration. I played so many games and this is what I've recently started to realize. The bigger the goalkeeper, the more blocks you can actually make. The smaller, he just don't see anything. I run the same thing on all four lines, like I said, and that's pretty much it and explains why I use what I use. If you look at the defense, I was running on zero both of them. Now I like cycle shoot on five for my defense because I still like them to cycle and shoot a little. I was running it on 10 at some point and actually it worked very good, but after the patch I have to reduce it on five. So this is the best what it works for me. I would suggest guys you try it out and see if it works for you. Some people actually like to hold line and pinch on five as well. Depends how you play, it may actually work for you as well. And the team strategies. So if we talk about the team strategies, I use 1-2-2 passive and 1-2-2 red at the moment. If I really, really struggle, I go to 2-3 and 1-4. And the reason why is because 2-3 and 1-4 will basically stop a lot of turnovers. So there will be not a lot of 2-1 and one and cross crease because you can see all my players are basically covering the blue line. There will be just not a lot of options for my opponent to get into my zone. And I only use it for a few games until I get out of that slump and actually start winning the games again. Same about the 2-3. I also have a center in front of the net who is always my best player pretty much. It's Mario or Gretzky. And I use the close quarters. It really works out for me very well. 1-2-2 passive is really how I play the game. But when I struggle, I go with 2-3. A lot of people use 1-3-1. I found that it really doesn't balance out a lot because I still am giving up a lot of turnovers. So I just went with 1-2-2 two, two passive instead. So for the four check, I have it on two. Again, you, you can try it as well. A lot of people use it like fully maxed out or zero at all. I had it maxed out. It didn't really work out for me a lot. So I have it at two. Protect the net and collapsing only reason I use these two is because I use the biggest, tallest goalkeepers. When I was using Shishorking at some point in the beginning of the game, it didn't really help me at all. So I decided if I was using a smaller goalkeeper, I would use normal and staggered. If I'm using the big guys, then I'm using protect the neck and collapsing. So offensive strategy would be standard, strong side slant and leaves on early. Pretty much never change it, works every time. Now let's go back to actual offensive strategies and I want to talk about 
when I said, you know, it depends which players you use and how you play the game. So I use Overload because it's a mixture of bigger, smaller, faster players. Let's say if you like to use a lot of female players as well, because they are quite fast, but they're being bumped off the pack quite easily or Patrick Kane, or let's say Marner, Overload probably will work the best for you. If you like to use the biggest guys, and let's say a lot of power forwards, then Crush the Knight will work very good for you. And the reason why, because Crush the Knight needs the big guys in front of the Knight who will screen that goalkeeper, and your opponent will not be able to bump them off the pack. If I'm stacking my team with the big guys, and I have it at the beginning of the game, again, it depends on the lineups, or if you have a lineup with only big guys, you can run the Crash the Net as well. If you have a lineup with just, let's say, Zdeno Charis, then you can use the Crash the Net on that line. If you are still using the mixture of the players, because I like to have, let's say, a bigger center, and the wings a little bit smaller because of the speed in creating the moments. So let's say I would use Mario Lemieux and a center, and then I would have Ponarin, and I don't know, let's say Larkin on the sides, then Overload would work very well if i would have great skill and you and gory have then probably crush the net would be the best strategy for that line one of the things people keep saying that is the behind the net is meta and everyone has to use it because it's apparently the best mixture the reason why behind the net doesn't work for me is you need to be very very good with the puck control Basically, you need to enter the zone with the puck, make sure you don't lose it, you skate around, you actually wait when the players are free, when they open up, and it means you need to actually start creating space, you need to do a lot of digs and stuff like that. If you are Division 4, Division 5, or maybe Division 3 players, probably behind the net will not work very well for you. You need to be Division 2 or Division 1 to be very efficient with the behind the net strategy. Again, it's up to you guys, you can use it, but I tried it out and I figured then you really need to be good at this game to run behind the net this year. Not that power play really matters in this game, I use 1-3-1 and aggressive then aggressive here as well, because I just like my power play to be aggressive, to attack the puck, to try to get it into the zone and create moments. Carry dump I have on zero, power play breakout I have on center line option, and quick breakout on stay wide. Penalty kill is 1-1-2, one, one, and aggressive again, I want my penalty killers to attack the puck, but I also suggest you guys, if you are the lower division, don't control your defense. The thing I try to do, I'm on a penalty kill, and not only on the penalty kill, but also when that pressure meter is up and I have to actually try to defend, I don't control my defense at all. What I do is I put my the biggest forward, I control him, I put him in that gap where there is a space between the goalkeeper and the net, because that's where they will try to aim with the wrist shot. And then I just let my defensemen do their job. Most of the time you will get the puck without actually controlling your defense. If you're struggling to play defense, this is the best suggestion. You just control your biggest forward, put him next to your goalkeeper, and your defense will do the job for you. Because AI are stupid, but not so. They still somehow manage to actually get a puck away from your opponent, pass it back to yourself, and then you can actually create a lot of moments or just get the puck out of the zone. One more thing I want to mention before we end is make sure you go and check your controller settings. After the patch, it actually sets your backskate to on again. So I had to go and turn it off and I realized, and again, it makes a huge difference. It always has to be on. Same about the online passing. If you had it, let's say on 90, after the patch, it goes back to 100 and then auto backskate is on. So make sure you go into the controller settings and check everything is like you like. If I look at the video settings, then I'm still running zone because I still think it's the best camera angle. More more and more people on the streams are asking me which camera angle I'm using. Zone actually helps with overload a lot. Crush the net also is very good if you run zone because you will really pass back to the blue line, then you will try to do the one-timer, shoot a puck in front of the net and go for those tip shots. Okay guys, thanks for watching today's video. The last thing I want to mention is if you change the strats, give yourself at least 10 games. You need to adapt, you need to get used to it. Don't expect that you change your strats and suddenly in the next game you will become better. Also, the struts don't win the game, it's how you play. Same about goalies, don't matter, it's about how you play your defense. There are a lot of things, it's not that you will change your strategies and suddenly become a Division 1 player. The only thing what strategies are affecting is how your AI is playing, where they are being based, like are they around the goalkeeper, are they blocking the shots, are they attacking your opponent, that's the only thing what strategy does. I still hope that EA maybe next year will release a little bit more strategies and allow us more configurations of how our AI plays. I would love to see something like a play box like in 2K where there is so many you can actually choose from, let's say Rangers, Devils, Black House, everyone have their own playbook and you can just choose whichever suits you best. Anyway, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know down in the comment section below. Are you using the same strats as day one or you change them after the patch? Because I would really like to know 
is the game playing different for you or you are still playing the same way and winning every single game? I hope you enjoyed today's video. Have a good one and see you on the ice.